military blockade? The message is clear. The Knox event is contained. I repeat, the Knox event is contained. Holy hell. After a week of living on his own in the town of Riverside, dread had just set in for Eugene Slaughter. After listening to the radio, there was finally some closure that something wasn't right in Knox County, but what that was, he still didn't know. Eugene felt the need to find answers. The stress of the so-called Knox event had left Eugene's mind running in a number of directions. But before he had time to think... As Eugene laid on the floor, struggling to breathe from the green substance that had dropped from the planes, all I can say is that they told us the event was contained. Eugene unexpectedly woke around midday the next day. Still slumped on the floor, the last thing he remembered about last night was walking to the bedroom to get some rest. After finally coming around from last night's events, Eugene wanted to find out more about the so-called Knox event and what on earth he was stuck in the middle of. After a quick bite of lunch, Eugene decided to head out to check around the local area. His first thought was to wander around the trailer park to see if there were any signs of what had happened after he passed out last night. He walked everywhere, up and down the park, and there was nothing. Or no one. Eugene decided he was going to walk to the main road. On his way towards the front of the park, he came across a burnt out trailer. With everything going on this week, he can't remember if this has been like this for some time, or if it had happened last night. More worryingly though, was the amount of burnt corpses that were here. Had there actually been people closer than he thought, surely they would have heard him coming in and out in his truck though, Eugene proceeded towards the main road. He passed Derek's house and that was when something caught his eye lying in the middle of the road next to what looked to be a crashed car. Eugene ran across the grass straight to the scene and after only a matter of seconds he realised there was a person laid there. In shock the lady began to move and Eugene finally thought he'd found someone. That was until they began to drag themselves across the floor towards Eugene, making only what he could describe as a moan. Eugene panicked with no idea of how how to help this person and been as socially awkward as he was, he decided to run away. He crossed the road towards the riverside self storage and hid behind the tree. He sat there crying to himself, the first person he'd seen in over a week, left in the middle of the road struggling for the life. Eugene decided to head towards work. He'd not been there since the day he arrived back in Riverside and as he crossed the green, like he has done many times over the years, he spotted more bodies laying around. Something seriously wasn't right. Eugene ran for the door of the warehouse. Surely someone that had worked with him in the past had been back to the factory. As he entered, it looked as he'd left it on Monday. There was nobody in the offices, in the changing rooms, or in the warehouse. He decided to head for the roof. It was the highest point he knew to get a better look around. Eugene couldn't see or hear anyone. He spotted another body to the rear of the main factory, and in a panic, he headed back downstairs and out of the front door. He went over to check the body near the main factory, hoping this time he could help someone, but as he headed over the car park and got closer, he knelt down but they were already gone. He continued around the perimeter and found another body with no signs of life. As he came back towards the main road, he spotted another body, again dead. He did, however, spot what looked to be another accident on the main road, so he went to investigate. Again, to his shock, as he got closer, the body began to make a strange noise. It was like they couldn't speak, but they wanted to get as close to him as possible for his help. Eugene panicked again. His heart rate began to rise, and he ran back towards the trailer park. As he arrived back to where he found the first person, there was no sign of them anywhere. As it was getting late and with the hope of another radio broadcast, Eugene headed back to the trailer to warm up and get some rest. As he arrived back to the trailer, he grabbed some food and sat on the kitchen floor. He thought long and hard about what he'd seen today, numerous bodies just lying in the streets, some barely hanging on, and all that played in his mind was that he was too afraid to help them. We can confirm that the Haitian neurogas was dropped in the Knox area to eliminate all aspects of the virus yesterday evening. Any living person hit by the blast will be classed as collateral damage. The message remains clear that the Knox event is contained. No human life will be allowed to enter the area within a six month period and all exit roads and bridges have been neutralised. It was safe to say Eugene was stuck and now in his mind, dying. Maybe due to being inside when the blast happened, he may have made it a bit longer than the other people he came across today. But for now, it was time to get some rest, with the hopes of waking up tomorrow.
After the news had been stuck in Knox County and the unknown of how long Eugene had left, it was time for him to turn his attention to securing up the trailer. As we heard last night, Eugene was stuck in this for the next six months at a minimum, and leaving the trailer park was not an option. Remember, Eugene's been here since he was a young child, so first on today's agenda was to cover up the windows. Eugene set off around the trailers close by, going room to room, collecting any sheets he could find. There were a few in a couple of the trailers, but he still needed a lot more to cover up everything in his trailer. With the poor weather of the past couple of days, Eugene found him himself an ex-military jacket for the extra warmth, and he came across another dead body in one of the trailers which had a desert eagle on. He took the gun, and this began to spark Eugene's mind. If this person died inside, then why was he still alive? But before that thought went any further, Eugene thought he'd heard some footsteps. After sitting in the trailer bathroom for some time with no further movement, Eugene continued on with his journey finding more sheets. He continued along the north side of the trailer park, jumping through windows. If the door doors were locked until he came across this, a trailer alarm. With the thought of a footstep earlier, Eugene panicked and headed straight back to his trailer. He locked the door behind him and began putting up the sheets around his bedroom and around the kitchen area. As Eugene became agitated, he went to light up a cigarette to calm his nerves, only to find out that his lighter had run out of gas. This was just another issue for Eugene to worry about. God knows why he didn't just use the cooker. He headed back out around the trailer park to look for either matches or a lighter, again going door to door, checking the trailer as he'd already been around. With no luck, he headed to the southeastern side of the trailer park, and after a couple of trailers, he was beginning to get tired. What he saw next would truly terrify Eugene to his core. As he slowly crept around the front of the trailer, he was greeted by what could only be a person that looked like they'd been beaten within an inch of their life. They began to beat on the window. Eugene ran. It was straight back to the trailer. He ran back across the trailer park, locked the door, and got straight into bed. This morning, Eugene woke up groggy from the number of nightmares he went over last night. He kept seeing the face of the man he saw in the trailer on the other side of the park. After grabbing some food, Eugene continued looking for more sheets in the trailer park. As he approached the most eastern side, he heard a window smash close by. He made his way to the final trailer, another sheet. But as he picked it up, again he began to hear the footsteps. This time, Eugene didn't run. Well, not straight away anyway. He was cornered in the trailer, so he headed towards the window. To his amazement, there was another person running around the trailer park with a wooden mallet in their hand. Eugene stayed quiet, too scared to reach out. He waited for his opportunity and sprinted back to his trailer. He managed to get up another two sheets for the kitchen windows, but his thoughts were now on his own life and his security. With another person walking around and holding a weapon, Eugene was terrified. He sat in the room for the rest of the afternoon with the door locked. He didn't have it in him to look out the windows or make a move. He just sat there worrying that he could die at any moment. A few hours had passed by and Eugene began to come around to the fact that sitting in the trailer with next to no food or supplies was not going to keep him alive. Even though he wasn't going to go out wandering the streets, he decided to grab his trusty hiking bag and head around a couple of the trailers to get some supplies. He was quiet, fast and efficient with what he was after. Food, medical supplies and any books to pass time. He only looted up a couple but with this somewhat sliver of a bit of confidence, it was a step in the right direction for Eugene. It began to get late, and with no sign of the rogue survivor, Eugene headed back to the trailer to put away what he'd found. The food went in the cupboard, the cooking items went in the other cupboard, and his small amount of medical supplies ended up in the bathroom. Eugene had found a beginner's book for foraging, so for the rest of the evening, he stayed in the locked trailer reading. Little did he know that what he was about to see the next morning would change the whole landscape of Knox County.